I'm a strong believer in the movement of God's spirit. A few years ago, the NEC, of which I was a part, that's the National Executive Council of American Baptist Churches, began to feel that we were somehow missing the boat. We were so focused on structure and things of that nature that we were totally missing where God was leading us. So we began to engage in Bible study. We began dwelling in the Word, reading Luke 10 over and over again, listening to what God was saying to us through that text. And as we listened, we became convinced that God was leading us in a new direction. God was taking us where we did not yet know where, but we were willing to follow. So we covenanted together, began to raise funds, and began to move in this new direction. And as a consequence, Transformed by the Spirit was born. We engaged other people. We began to get interested in seeing this not filter down, but bubble up from the churches. And as a result, we believe that we have caught the winds of God's Spirit moving through this tired denomination, taking us into new directions and new places. The Journey Team has been a real blessing for me. It's an opportunity to really join in partnership with my brothers and sisters in the American Baptist Churches who have a variety of gifts and graces that they bring. So what we have done is that we have partnered together. We have really concentrated to listen, to try to discern what it is that God wants American Baptist to be and do as God begins to transform us as a denomination and as a church. So it has been enriching, it has been challenging, it also has been <clears throat> the kind of thing where you have to come with an open heart and open mind because you have no idea what your brothers and sisters are going to say. Likewise, you really have no idea where the wind of the Spirit is going to blow. So it has been a wonderful opportunity to be with my friends. So I've been involved in Transformed by the Spirit since the very beginning. And the thing that really excites me about Transformed by the Spirit has to do with the creation of webs of relationships that bridge gaps and, and go over walls and uh, bring people together. And the intentionality that has always been there is to bring people together from both inside and outside the organization and create those webs. I've seen that happen in very intentional ways, and uh, that's what gives me hope. Answering the question, what is the best part about Transformed by the Spirit, is the opportunity to see God in our midst and to see the excitement and the energy it has created within our denomination. I am just so thrilled to hear the wonderful stories within congregations about uh, joining God in the neighborhood and um, in multiple ways in terms of how they have engaged in ways to join God where God is working. I think that is a part of the lifeblood of our denomination anytime we can sensitize ourselves to listen and to hear from God and then respond. And for me that is um, our mission as disciples of Christ and I'm just so excited to be a part of that process. Being a part of the journey team has been a tremendous um, spiritual uh, opportunity for me to continue and grow the depths of our uh, dwelling in the word sessions and just having an opportunity to allow the word of God to be seated in me and then seeing that grow in different ways whether it's in my congregational life at my pastorate at Bethany Baptist Church or even within our region I feel extremely blessed to be part of this process knowing that this is something that as a denomination as we sensitize ourselves to the Word of God that it will impact us in ways that we cannot even dream of and so I look forward to that continued uh, germination of God within us and seeing how God will use us in the future. When I think about Transformed by the Spirit I think about something completely different than any other program or any other emphasis in the denomination. As we think about why the church exists the church exists to do things like evangelism and discipleship, to help with missions. And over the last several years, 
it's almost as if we've tried to take each one of those and make each one of those a quick fix. In terms of worship, we thought, well, maybe contemporary worship is the answer to that. With missions, everyone tried to become a missional church overnight, thinking maybe if we did that, it would fix all that was wrong with the church. And we certainly know, in terms of evangelism, all the church growth principles that surfaced in the 80s to try to fix the church. What I like most about Transformed by the Spirit is that it's not a quick fix. Transformed by the Spirit initiative understands that we have to go back to the source. We have to go back to, to God and what God is doing and try to not only understand that, but then respond to that in terms of what God is up to. A big part of Transformed by the Spirit has been uh, practical application toward specific areas of ministry. Joining God in the neighborhood has been one specific way in which I've discovered new ways of uh, going out into the community, listening carefully to the stories of people and learning how God is in the midst of these stories and then being uh, faithful not only to listen and then to discern but then to apply uh, the grace and truth of God's message uh, within the context as God leads. And so it's been uh, a blessing and I see many more blessings ahead uh, in this whole venture that we're in with Transformed by the Spirit. I think the two best parts of, of the um, Transformed by the Spirit process have been the action learning model and uh, the organizations becoming familiar with that and then the uh, joining God in the neighborhood. It, it is taking that action learning model and doing, doing some, some uh, proactive steps to help the church get out into the community and be incarnational. And those are really the two best parts of the, of the uh, trans transformed by the spirit process for me so far. But being involved with the, the team and having the interaction is also a great, great process for me. I think the best part of transformed by the spirit is the way it's affected my life personally. I first learned about transformed by the spirit in 2012. And ever since that day, it's affected how me and my family engage our neighborhoods. So um, we used to be really big into hanging out in our backyard and, and playing games and stuff with our family there. But we learned that we didn't really know who our community was. We didn't know our neighbors. And so in 2012, we bought two inexpensive chairs and set them in our driveway. And we brought all the kids' toys out to the front. And we began to learn about our community. We got to know the neighbors that surrounded our, our house in whole new ways. We learned their stories. We learned about their lives. We became part of their lives. And it really impacted how we could be the hands and feet of Christ in our neighborhood. During that course of time, we were also meeting um, with a small group of people in our church. And we really felt like we needed to be closer to where our church was. At the time, we were commuting 30 minutes to our congregation. And we realized that our neighborhood ministry and our church ministry were two very different things. And so by praying with our small group, by praying with our church, by speaking with our new neighbors that we knew so much better than we did a year ago, uh, we learned that God was really moving us to a new place. And this was really a, an exciting time, but also a very nerve-wracking time. We were unsure about leaving our neighborhood and moving to a new neighborhood closer to our church. But because of the prayers, because of the encouragement, we eventually put our house up for sale, and it sold in six hours, which was an incredible experience um, and overwhelming. Then we had to buy a new home, and we began to look around uh, about a mile radius from the church, and we finally found one about two weeks later. And we were really excited to, to, to move to our new setting. And since that time, we've carried on this neighborhood ministry. We still enjoy our backyard. We still enjoy sitting on the back deck from time to time. But a bigger part of our ministry to our neighborhood has been being in our front yard, being in our driveway with our inexpensive plastic chairs and getting to know our neighbors. And over the last year and a half in our new setting, um, we've gotten to know all the neighbors on our street. And it's been a really meaningful time where we've spent... Uh, many great meals around the table with our new neighbors. Our kids all play together. Uh, we've learned the stories of many people 
and, and had them over for meals as well. And it's really just been a way for us to, to apply the principles of Transformed by the Spirit in our own personal lives. What I've really enjoyed about Transformed by the Spirit is the fact that we are spending time in God's Word trying to catch the movement of God's Spirit. We dwell in the Word. We spend time going deep into the Word, listening and reflecting on where God is taking us. We have put together an amazing group of people. We believe that we are sort of a think tank for the denomination. We're trying to create within the denomination a new culture and a new way of responding to the movement of God in this world. Why the Journey Team? When Transformed by the Spirit was formed and in its infancy, it really was the NEC working with the consultants that came together and said, we've got to do something to help us be more conscious of where the wind of the Spirit is blowing in our denomination. But because the consultants were not American Baptists, there needed NEC thought to be a mediator, a body, a group of folks who literally could translate in some way what the consultants were saying and what NEC knew to be true. And so what we would do is that we would gather together with the consultants and the consultants would begin to give us information, studies, ways in which we would go forward, ways in which we could influence, what a way in which we might be able to hear what Spirit was saying to American Baptist churches. So it was the NEC that said, we need a group of people who can be our eyes and ears as, as well as to be that liaison with these consultants who knew not American Baptist churches. That's why we were formed. That's why we came together. And we have played that role and played it sometimes during very difficult times. Being that persons, those persons in the middle, walking the walk in the middle, to help facilitate what God might be saying. So the best part of Transformed by the Spirit that I've seen is, is that intentionality of bringing both outside and inside together. Uh, the very first meeting that was, um, that was the, the beginning, if you will, of Transformed by the Spirit brought pastors, young pastors from all over uh, the U.S. and Puerto Rico together uh, to talk about what they saw as adaptive challenges in the denomination and then moved from there inside and brought those together and it's just it's just always been about bringing people together and getting them to listen listen to God and listen to scripture listen to one another and then act on what they're hearing being part of the journey team has in particular been um, a great ride because the journey team was created with that intentionality of being not attached to any of the particular organizations but standing uh, in the gap and continuing to encourage all the various entities in our American Baptist family to continue this process of listening. One of the best parts about being in the journey team and working with the journey team is the fact that this is a group that has no reporting or expectations to make something happen. The group is allowed to discern first and then act secondly. And it seems like so many places in our denomination we're worried about results first and that really stifles our best work. It stifles our creativity, it stifles, stifles our ability to think, it stifles our ability to draw from every single person and every constituent in the ABC. Transformed by the Spirit has that ability to draw the best thinking from others along with what God is doing and put those two together before we engage in anything that looks like a program. Transformed by the Spirit is not a program. A program essentially seeks, seeks to meet the needs of individuals in a congregation. This doesn't so much seek to meet needs of people in the congregation, but rather, what are the needs of the world? And how can we respond to that by God's Spirit? There was a time when I had lost hope in the denomination. 
But Transformed by the Spirit has turned me around. I'm not optimistic, but I'm very hopeful that God is leading us into a new future. And it's my hope and my prayer that everyone will join this tremendous movement. It's not a program, it's a movement. God's Spirit is leading us in new directions and we need to catch the winds of the Spirit or we're gonna get left behind.